Frameshare Pro is a revolution in how you can manage presets. Instead of remembering the framing behind a number, you can have a color thumbnail that shows you the framing. Because what good is it if you have 100 presets available in your camera if you can't remember them? But Frameshot Pro solves that problem. It also is insanely easy to store and recall presets from a single button press. And in this video, we'll look at Frameshot Pro Red Edition. It is designed to fit right in with your RC SK5 PDC controller. And honestly, it's insanely beautiful together. And a little background, the RC SK5 is a PTC controller made by us exclusively for Canon. Frameshot Pro exists in a few color variations in our standard lineup, and you can purchase that directly from us or your favorite Skahoy reseller. So this is how it looks as the Frameshot Pro has just been connected to the network and the RC SK5 is actually coming from a different project we have just had where we just controlled cameras. So I just plug this in, put it next to, and in Reactor, the software that runs out of the RC SK5, we see this. This is coming from the previous project that we had going. All I need to do to include the Frameshot Pro is to select it from this menu. So I'll just change configuration over like this, and then you can see I'm missing a panel. So essentially the RC SK5, as it has been purchased by, you know, the standard edition coming from Canon, is able to include the Frameshot Pro. So I add that panel, it is looking on the network to see which panels are available. Now in this case, I have two panels, that's interesting. So I think what I wanna do is to just check the serial number. All right, so that's 1259. In other words, it is this panel. So I can select this one and now it is actually instantly connected to the RC SK5. That's all it takes. That's really, really easy integration. This is modularity from Skahoy. Modularity means that you can take many of our products and combine like this into one cohesive surface. You'll see that in a moment because the next thing we want to do is to add some cameras. And in the previous video recorded on this, I showed how you could use device discovery to basically search for cameras on the network. That's super neat. In this case, because I just changed the configuration, all I need to do is to pick them from the existing collection. And the collection is the devices we have over here. So here you can add all the cameras you want. I have only two that are actually connected. The others were just for show to include in the camera selector. But I can now add it over here from the device collection and then I can select. I will hold down shift so that I can select multiple. Um, and let's just start with these two. That that's That's fair enough. So now we have these two cameras selected. Let's see what happens when I press or select CRN 100. See, the moment I do that, the Frameshot Pro is activated. So it's actually listening to RCSK5. Or in other words, the RCSK5 is taking full control of the Frameshot Pro. Okay, let's let's move the uh, CRN100 uh, here. So you can see I can adjust this one. Let's just uh, store a preset position over here. So um, if I press and hold, it's storing a preset position on that. You see a thumbnail is popping up here. And now I move into a different position. I press and hold to store another view and that thumbnail is stored. If I press the first one, it is recalling, it is storing. And I could now almost end this video at this point. But we also want to do the same with the CIN 700. With this one, we can also see the output of the camera. And you see this great framing we have done. I want to store that on the first preset. Ah, there are also already some thumbnails here. All right, so let's just store the first preset. So now I override a preset by pressing and holding and it is snapping that uh, location and putting that thumbnail in the view here. Now, let's um, just zoom in on something. So I'll see how quickly can I actually zoom into the color chart over here in the corner. All right, I press and hold to store this one. There we go. Yes, uh, I want to have Master Yoda in here. Okay, yes, press and hold. Uh, actually, I think I, I think I just quickly want to do some focus adjustments on this one. So. Let me see, let's just bring Yoda into focus. There we go. Okay, once again, press and hold to store this preset. And it should be updated, including the focus. Then let's just have Princess Lyre. There we go. I'll just put it back on auto in this case, press and hold. 
you're storing this. So you see these thumbnails are now added. I can also go to second pages. So now we have pages that has never been populated yet. I can actually go all the way up to, I think, preset 100. So let's do preset 100, right? Just for the fun of it. And that's going to be the plant. Pre oh, wait. Press and hold. Storing the preset. Yes. All right. Let's go back to the first page. So we just dial all the way down to the first page and we have these thumbnails that will show us what we're actually recalling. So I'm just pressing this one. We get that framing. We get this framing. We get the framing that we see there with Yoda. And this one is Princess Leia. And I don't need to think because I have visual presets that helps me or the volunteer in your church or your lecturer, your teacher at university or anyone in a corporate setting. The Frameshot Pro is so brilliant to help people getting these preset positions right on the first try. One clever thing I believe we did as we added the Frameshot Pro and the configuration. Over here, the configuration is more or less the same as it is without the Frameshot Pro. But we decided to actually remove the usage of these buttons for presets. Because why have preset recall over here when you have the Frameshot Pro hooked into the network? So instead, actually, your camera selector is bigger now. And that's the reason why I want to just add some of these cameras which are currently not connected on the network. So let me just quickly add a few of these that has already been included here. Or I could do it manually over here. There's a little less distance between the buttons. So I'm adding quite a lot of cameras that is not set up, but it all adds up to my camera selector here. So now I have a ton of cam Canon cameras. Notice the camera selector. It is now populated not only with five, but I'm also using these buttons up here to select between the cameras. This is blinking because they are unconnected. So we'll see that for everything else than camera one and two. But we have multiple pages. Actually, we have three pages and there are 10 cameras on each page. So all together, this should be 21 cameras. If you want to actually change the order of these, it is super easy. Now notice what happens here in the in the display. We can also change labels. So for instance, we could call this the small camera. And we could call this the large camera and instantly that is updated. And I can also change the order of these two around any way I want <clears throat> like that. OK, so that's how you manage your camera selector. Uh, for a standard setup, you don't need to worry about anything else in here. You can also color your cameras. Actually, we can just choose purple for the two cameras that we know for sure is online. <laughs> so they are now purple while the others uh, are just left with the default color. So that the naming is what you basically want to care about inside of this dialog here. Uh, what options do we have in here? Basically only this one. And that is because we are running on the standard version of the RCS K5. So my point was to show you that the camera selector is now expanding and using all these things. The final thing that I think needs some attention is that button and these seven buttons because they are currently not used. They are not assigned to anything. And that is because now you can assign them. And if you go into the configuration tab, you'll see that um, from the previous video I did on the RCS K5, you will know that you can actually customize the menu up here any way you want. But you are now also able to select what is called user keys. And with user keys, and if we enable the RCSK5, you can see there are eight things in this UI that apparently is available for us to, to put something on. So now I can press this button. I now have a chance to search through functions that are available to us. So let's type auto iris if I want to have auto iris on this one. Um, and you find it in here in exposure iris auto iris. If I select that, I now have auto iris here. It would be redundant because I also have it over here. But let me just show you that actually that brought by my own will auto iris down onto this key. And you can go through all the various settings that you find inside the Canon XE protocol here. So you can click that button. We have another seven buttons over here we can assign functions to. So maybe we want to do some more stuff. Here we have. Um, um, a shift, we can put that on. That means actually now we have a four way button where we can press the sides of this one, uh, changing the uh, auto exposure shift level. That's basically, you know, changing the, uh, the reference level. We have uh, what do we want? Shooting mode, for instance, on this one. So now we can go full auto and manual. That is actually what we have in the home menu right here. So that could be interesting to have on its own key at all times. And in this way, you can build out these keys as much as you like with the user function. So eight user keys are available adding the Frameshot Pro with the standard license for the RCSK5.
before we end this video, I would like to show you darkroomscarhoy.com, which is our image gallery. And on this page, you find Frameshot Pro, Frameshot Pro in black, in blue over here, and the red side version that we have been looking at, including this slim version for our mega panel users. So it comes in many variations, but it's the same product, has the same features as you have seen today. Thanks for watching this far. Don't miss out on news from Skahoy. So please like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. Sign up for our newsletter, for instance, whatever you prefer. Of course, any questions are also happily answered by our friendly support and sales staff, which you can reach on support at skahoy.com.